there is a recent study that now has LGBTQ plus supporters in uprage over a new artificial intelligence that could potentially tell if someone is gay or straight just by facial facial recognition. Now, this is some serious stuff. Um, the study comes out of Stanford University showing that artificial intelligence can accurately guess whether people are gay or straight based on looking at their faces. Now, the research which went viral last week used a sample of online dating photos and was limited to only white users to demonstrate an algorithm that could distinguish between gay and straight men 81% of the time. And 74% of the time for women, and, suge and suggesting that machines potentially have a much better gaydar. <laughs> We're gonna talk about it. Thoughts, five words or less. Artificial lack of intelligence. Why though? Not here for this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a little disturbing because yes. I mean, you're, you're basically saying, first of all, I, I subscribe to the notion that someone's sexuality is something that you give to someone when you're ready to. If you wanna disclose if you're of the LGBTQ plus community, that's something you do on your own time. Um, this artificial intelligence that could possibly be weaponized yeah. against uh, queer individuals, it, it's alarming. And you know, you have people like the HRC, the Human Rights Campaign, and GLAAD who are lambasting and are very, very, very upset about this calling this dangerous, flawed, and junk science. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing is like, I love science. I really do. I'm such a science nerd. And when these researchers are saying that, well, we're just letting, you know, the LGBTQ plus community that this, this technology exists so that they can protect themselves, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine if that's your excuse, but then do like a reliable study because what they did was not representative. Right. They used only pictures of white people on one dating site. It wasn't a representative sample at all. And then they're saying, well, this proves that it's uh, nature, not nurture. And I'm like, no, you talked about some facial features, but then you talked about hairstyles and like whatever. It's such bullshit science, no offense, like, like that they didn't even take that into account. It's not representative, it's not, uh, who knows if it is, um, if they can do it again sure. and get the same results. But it does like alert us that there are people out there who want to be able to look at you and identify you, which is wrong. You cannot tell somebody's sexuality by looking at them or by putting a robot on their face and seeing if they have certain facial hair or uh, if they're wearing, I think it said like jewelry or something yeah. stupid like that off of one stupid dating site. Who knows if it's like a dating site that's for like certain people who like certain, it's just Yeah, stupid. I mean the whole thing. The whole thing is, as much as I hate to say this because I love science and I come from a science background, it's kind of trash. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the scientists who conducted it only kind of went back and were like, well, we're just trying to protect them when they heard all this backlash from it. Um, and you know, like you said, not representative at all, only white people. Um, and I think that, yeah, like if you did a study with, you know, millions of people of different backgrounds, men, women, different races, like maybe you could conclude the stuff that, you know, that they were saying. But um, again, I think it's totally unnecessary to even do a study like this. And the fact that there's even technology that right. they are trying Absolutely. to perfect to, you know, you know, tell someone's sexuality just based on their photo. That alone in itself is just like terrible and doesn't even need to exist. And that's where the HRC and Gladys say that this could be weaponized against people because right. there's not there's no need for it. Now, yeah, no um, the study was done out of Stanford, and the and Michael Kozinski was the uh, assistant professor who essentially wrote this program. And he says, "quote One of my obligations as a scientist is that if I know something that could potentially protect people from falling prey to such risks, I should publish it. Rejecting these results because you don't agree with them on an ideological level." Level, you might be harming the very people that you care about. Now, his so his argument is is this could help people that this right. could be that this could be um, a tool to save people. Which again, I don't agree with. I, I I don't think so. I think once you have artificial intelligence, and we've talked about this on Think Tank, we yeah. talked about this here on on on, on various platforms here on mm -hmm. TYT that. Things can be weaponized. Elon Musk with automatons. You yep. once this gets into the wrong hands of people, is it going to be like what? Wearing a um, a scarlet letter saying, "Hey, you're this, you're that." Right. It, it's, it's very bad. And you also had a retort from Ashlyn Johnson of the Human Rights Campaign who said, "Quote: Imagine for a moment 
the potential consequences if this flawed research were to be used to support a brutal regime's efforts to identify and or persecute people they believe to be gay or LGBTQ+. Now, Stanford should distance itself from such junk science, there's that word again, rather than lending its name and credibility to research that is dangerously flawed and leaves the world. And in this case, millions of people's of lives worse and less safe than before. Yeah, I look, if there is knowledge of intelligence that could harm people and coming out with that research and coming out with those study findings, I think could be helpful and right. important, right? So we could say like, hey, let's put a ban on this, right? Like mm -hmm. I do think that's um, crucial, right? But there's no indication from what I've read and the research that I've done that anybody was moving towards this. It yeah. just sounds like this Krasinski guy was like, "Oh, let's see if we can establish this," which is almost more detrimental because he's creating the AI to potentially identify these people by. Oh, so stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I, the this was first reported. <laughs> Honey, you make very valid points. This was this was first reported in the Guardian. In, in, in the Guardian, and the Guardian actually wanted to participate in the study and use the artificial intelligence and Kaczynski said no. Yeah, it's a little bit sketchy and they, he also didn't say like what dating site he got the photos from mm. and it's just like- And it was like 71 profiles, something yeah, weird I'm like, like that. So yeah, it's just- Mm, yeah, I, like I agree. And, I, and again, <laughs> I stand by my stance that someone's sexuality is at their discretion to disclose. Yeah. And, and, in and it's not binary, right. it's not gay or straight. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. There's people all along the spectrum yeah. and this doesn't account for that. And this just further hones in the fact that we have such a like binary viewpoint and binary perspective about sexuality, about gender that is so antiquated. And especially when you're talking about something so futuristic and right. so revolutionary as AI, you need to also step up your right. your uh, present I like you know ideology about mm -hmm. what's going on in, in the world and how it is present. Well, well, absolutely. And lastly, Kaczynski said that he would love for a researcher to debunk this and yeah. to prove him wrong. So, Please. There, there, I mean, I, I feel like Kaczynski had, yeah, okay, the, the AI, ridiculous. But the, the writer is saying, listen, I know that this could potentially be bad, but someone come in and prove me wrong mm -hmm. and, and we could have this all go away. So, who knows? Uh, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that artificial intelligence should be used to out someone or no? I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know, that's just where I stand on that.